During the Middle and Late Permian, a time in which only the most ferocious survived, a group of saber-toothed quadruped therapsids rose amongst the ranks, becoming some of the most vicious animals the world has ever seen. They were so mighty and terrifying that they would eventually be called the Gorgonopsids, a nod to the Gorgons of Greek mythology. And during the end of the 19th century, near a calm river in Russia, remains of the largest and arguably the deadliest of them all was discovered, the Innostrancivia. However, despite being found in the late 1800s, it wasn't until 1922 that it was properly described and given its name, which paid homage to the Soviet geologist Alexander Innostrantsev, and thus Innostrantsevia Alexandre was born. Based on the holotype skull and skeleton, it was blatantly clear that the Innostrantsevia was a giant member of its family, with the Alexandre species being estimated to have reached 3 meters or 9.8 feet in length, easily making it the largest Gorgonopsid at that point in time. However, in the 1930s, another Gorgonopsid, one that hailed from South Africa, was unearthed. It was not only the largest African genus ever discovered, but was also big enough to challenge the Indostranscivia's title of King of the Gorgons, and it was the Rubidgia. It had a gargantuan skull which led many to believe that it outsized the Indostranscivia, or at least matched it. However, the Indostranscivia was not alone in this fight for the crown, as yet another species was discovered later on, the Indostranscivia latifrons. And if the original species was a giant, Giant, then Latifrons was a titan, as its skull was and still is the largest known Gorgonopsid head ever, measuring 60 centimeters or 23.6 inches, about twice the length of the skull of a gray wolf. And because of its head size, it is believed to have possibly been over 11 feet or 3.35 meters long, making it the largest Gorgonopsid to date. The paleontologists who discovered it realized it was a new species, as it had a lower, wider snout and less teeth in comparison to the holotype. And even more species would end up being discovered, like the Urolensis, the smallest of the three species. And even though it was most likely the largest of its kind to ever live, the Innostrancivia had other assets that made it the deadliest gorgon. And one of these assets was actually quite ironic, agility. One would think that the biggest would be the least agile, and yet the Innostrancivia is thought to have been a better runner than other gorgonopsids, including the smallest genus, which was 3.3 times smaller than itself. And this is all more more impressive given the fact that it wasn't exactly lightly built, as even though its body and center were slim, its frame was densely packed with muscles, leading to individuals weighing anywhere from 660 pounds or 300 kilograms to possibly 1,000 pounds or 454 kilograms, a similar weight range to that of the North American elk. And at this weight, the reason why Innostrancivia was able to be speedy was thanks to its bones, as its humerus and femur were relatively elongated, suggesting suggesting that it had proportionally longer limbs than others of its kind, hinting to a higher level of agility and speed. The running aptitude its bones provided would have let the Innostrancivia easily chase down prey and catch them using its powerful front legs and claws. Its front legs were extremely robust and stocky in comparison to its back legs, suggesting they were often used. And along with its legs, the Innostrancivia had yet another weapon for killing, a far deadlier and potent one, its saber-like canines. The pronounced canines were the iconic feature of any Gorgonopsid, though Innostrancivia took iconic to another level, as it bore massive ones, with the canines on the upper jaw being 15 centimeters or 5.9 inches, and were quite thick and durable. The bite force it could inflict with its lethal canines is not certain, but believed to have been less than that of other large Gorgonopsids, which had comparatively stronger and wider skulls, as opposed to Innostrancivia's still well-built, but more narrow and lighter head. Furthermore, its bite is thought to have been likely weaker than a black bear's and would not have been able to crush bone. However, despite lacking bone crunching power, the Innostrancivia was still a very active hunter and could have used its canines in many ways, as reflected by the excess number of proposed killing methods. Some believe that it hunted by pursuing prey and diving straight in, grappling and utilizing its teeth to slice and puncture through soft, vulnerable targets like the neck or belly, quickly dispatching the victim. Others believe that it did not strong-arm hunts, rather employing ambushes, where it would attack unsuspecting prey with a large bite, retreat a bit, and repeat the process until blood loss and shock killed the animal. This ambush and attack then retreat tactic is generally the more agreed upon idea, as the Innostrancivia's jaw seems better built for it, being double-jointed which allowed Innostrancivia to open its mouth extremely wide and administer giant bites that could rip out considerable chunks of flesh, though in recent years there has 
has been a shift to the belief that it actually used both the strong arm and ambush tactic. In this mix of ideas, the Innocentsivia would run down and consume smaller prey, while using surprise attacks for larger ones. And this new conjecture also lines up with the fauna that it coexisted with, as both the small Vivaxosaurus and large armored Scutosaurus were present. And once it secured a kill, through whatever means, the Innocentsivia would have probably sheared meat off and swallowed it whole, utilizing its razor-like incisors and molars, akin to how some theropod dinosaurs consumed meat. Additionally, it's more than likely that Innocentsivia also fought others of its kind, using both its legs and teeth, battling for dominance, food, or over-potential mates. With its deadly saber teeth and imposing size, there is no doubt that Innocentsivia was the apex predator of its time, and the largest carnivore around, ruling the Permian from roughly 259 to 252.3 million years ago. It solely inhabited what is today Russia, specifically being found in the European portion of the country. During the majority of its reign, this environment consisted of deserts, which were exceedingly hot during the day, cold at night, and very dry. However, relief was found in rivers and streams that peppered the land. Shallow lakes also appeared to have been abundant, and would seasonally flood and dry up, leading to some chaotic times in which competition between Innocentsivias would be rampant. Plants and trees were also present during this time, mainly consisting of seed ferns, followed by conifers and ginkgos. Since it lived in a harsh environment that could become freezing during the night, it's thought by some to have had a layer of fur. Though it's actually uncertain if it did have fur, was hairless, or even sported scales for protection. Yet, if it did have fur, it would make it look quite a bit like some sort of proto-saber-toothed cat. But it wasn't a type of cat, rather a stem mammal, which were once upon a time referred to as mammal-like reptiles, a term which has now fallen into disfavor. But whatever it was, it would have been a blood-curdling sight for all the other residents of its environment, which along with Scutosaurus and Vivaxosaurus included the carnivorous Anatherapsidus and the fellow Gorgonopsid Pravoslavlevia. These two predators would not have been an issue for Innocentsivia, as they were many times smaller and wouldn't dare challenge the king of Permian Russia. Yet, even the largest and deadliest Gorgon could not defeat Mother Nature, as at the end of the Permian, the Innocentsivia disappeared. It is not certain if it died during the Permian mass extinction event, aka the Great Dying, or if it faded away just before it began. Supposing that it did go extinct during this event, it would have died during an earlier phase, finding itself bombarded with temperature fluctuations, acid rain, and wildfires, all courtesy of the Siberian Traps, a massive volcanic feature that is believed to have been the cause of the Great Dying. And unfortunately, no other Gorgonopsid survived the Permian extinction, all becoming relics of the past.